Danielle? Right before Easter break, four day weekend. I'm killing time because I still got a few of you with phones out. Do me a favor, just slide those off to the side. We're not live streaming, so you don't need your phones to watch us live on YouTube with a 10 second delay, which is always fun. We're going to start off with quadratic formula. You saw this in Algebra 1. It's this thing, all right? And this may or may not have been challenging for you to memorize. Was it hard? Did they have to have you memorize this? Yeah? Was it hard for you to get it memorized? No, it was pretty easy. Memorize this? Was, was it kind of hard for you? Oh, sorry. I, I had trouble memorizing it. Um, and then when I started teaching, I realized that I had to, like, turn out this formula very quickly and then try to get others to memorize it, too. I freaked out a little bit, and then I remembered my mom helped me out with this. And here's what she showed me. Ready? Here's her memory trick. But you got to watch. Got to look. Ready? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. It's the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it works. Right? Um, and if you don't like Pop Goes the Weasel, which is fine, it's not going to insult me at all. Um, you can probably go onto YouTube and put in quadratic formula songs, and they've got like all sorts of, they've got some rap ones. I think there's a country version. There might be Taylor Swift out there somewhere, like just this song. So find a melody that works for you if you're having trouble memorizing it, and then that can help. Here's, here's when you can use it. You can use quadratic formula when you've got something that looks like this and it equals zero. This number is A, this number is B, and please include the sign. And this number is C, please include the sign. You're going to substitute those A, B, and C values into this weird thing, and then you're going to simplify it as much as you can, and you're done. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to simplify this as much as we can, and then call it done. So uh, let's let's do this one together. Let's do this one. All right. Uh, there should be some pencils on my desk in a bucket. All right. Let's write our formula. Ready? I'm going to use my memory technique because you'll see every time I write it, I'm singing it in my head. Shh, shh. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. It's dumb and it's stupid and I get it. All right, I've got a few of you that this is feeling really comfortable and so if you don't need this explanation, you're welcome to get started on the back. There's practice problems. Just knock through those to remind yourself how, how easy it is, okay? So, but for those of you who are, are needing the walkthrough, here it is for you. This is A, here's B and we're taking the sign. Here's C and we're taking the sign. So, negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. All right, I have that mess, which I'm going to clean up. I'm going to do whatever multiplications I can do, square things, subtract things, all of that stuff. Do, 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 do. That's 16. That's a positive. 48. Please be double-checking my arithmetic to make sure that I'm Dividing and subtracting properly, multiplying properly. Okay. Negative four plus or minus square root. Um, sixteen plus forty-eight. Uh, Sixty-four. Yeah. yeah. Which looks like a mess. 
check the square root because if you can simplify it down, especially if there's whole numbers involved, do it. If you can't, leave it there. No decimals are allowed in this section. Square root of 64 is 8. And I have two possible answers. I've got one answer where I'm looking at the positive version. And then I have one answer where I'm looking at the negative version. Up here at the top, it ends up being 4 over 4 or 1. And down here, it ends up being negative 12 over 4 or negative 3. And so my answer is 1 or negative 3. You could write it this way, or you could <coughs> write it this way. I think maybe just this. Make it more simple. That set notation's weird. You can see one of those two ways. Is it coming back to you? No? Okay, I've got I got some nods and I got some no's. Those of you who are no's, what part did I did I lose you on a part? Okay. You just it's it's easy enough that even though you didn't remember it, you still got it. Oh good. I'll pat myself on the back. All right. So as practice, you've got nine questions here on the back of the notes. This is the assignment. Just knock out these nine with quadratic formulas. Okay, so identify your A, B, and C, stick it in the formula, simplify it down as much as you can, and you're going to get two answers. It's entirely possible that the number underneath the radical is a zero, in which case you're only going to end up with one value. You're going to have x equals and then some number. Also possible that the number underneath the radical is a negative. In which case, you're going to have to simplify it down, and your answers will have the letter I in it. And there will be two of them. Okay? So keep an eye out for <laughs> keep an eye out for that, that your answers will have an I in it. Ah! I'm so glad you got the joke. What if the underneath the radical is equal to zero? Oh, if the entire top thing is equal to zero, then your answer is zero. Which is fine. It's an allowable number. Both of them. Unless your thing only has one answer, in which case just the one is fine. But if it has two, we need to see both. So if you have something number plus or minus and then stuff, it's two answers. Got to have them both. If that plus or minus stuff is a zero, then it's only one answer. Cool. All right, let's look at day 10. So day 10 is going to start with hi, use quadratic formula again, which is why this one only has nine problems, because you're going to practice it again here. But this time, it's in the form of systems of equations. Remember systems of equations, where we had the 2 by 2 and the 3 by 3, and it was a long and tedious, and it was disgusting, and everyone panicked? Yeah, we're going to do it again. But this time, look at number 5. This time, one of those equations <coughs> is not a straight line. Now, one of the equations is a quadratic. It's shaped like a problem. Taking a look at this thing, I noticed that both of these equations are y equals stuff. So I'm going to substitute for y. So I'm only going to have one equation. It's going to have all x's. I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to replace y with it. So this equation is going right here. <coughs> First move is done. It's now a single equation, a single variable. I can now solve this. Okay. Um, in order to solve a quadratic, whether I'm going to factor, complete the square, use quadratic formula, all of them require it to be equal to zero. So I'm going to shuffle things around until I get equals zero. If I can find my pen. Okay. Do, 
zero. I'm going to clear this side. I'm going to make the left side zero, not because I have to, but because that keeps my x squared term positive, <coughs> and all of my tips and tricks work best when x squared is positive. That zero, that zero. So far so good? So as you're looking at this, if you've practiced your factoring, you might already be able to see how this factors. <coughs> if you've practiced your completing the square, you might also see how this factors. The directions on this, however, say you're going to practice quadratic formula. So we're going to ask you to go quadratic formula on this, even if in your head you already kind of have a sense of the answers because in your head you're already seeing the factors. Use that as the, yes, I'm doing it properly. Okay? All right, so identify your A, B, and C. Shouldn't be too bad. Do, do. Okay. It's going to be just, excuse me, like the example I did on my notes. Do you want me to go ahead and run through it or? No. No, no. No. Uh, yes, run through it real quick. All right, I had one. Tell me when to stop. If you don't need it, then just kind of power through. Oops. <laughs> it's because I didn't write it. I didn't sing my song first. That's, that's why I'm messing up here. I don't have a number for A, so I'm going to put a 1. Okay, there's my substitution, which we have to see. If you write large and jumbo and you need more space, please feel free to use a separate sheet of paper. Just label it number five or whichever one you're doing. Do all your work there and then you can see. You can see from here what's going to happen? Okay. Notice how the thing under the radical is going to become a zero. You're only going to have... Gentlemen, you're only going to have one real answer for this one. X is going to equal some number. Maybe. Do the arithmetic real quick. Confirm it. Once you've found a value for X, I think that's the right number. Okay. Once you found a value for x, we're going to go back to that second equation, which is the linear equation, because that's the one that's going to be the least numbers to deal with. And we're going to plug the value for x into there in order to get a value for y. And so you're going to write that your solution <coughs> is the point negative 2, 5. If you've got a positive number under the radical, you're going to have two real number solutions, so you should have two points. If you have a negative number under the radical, you likely will still have two solutions, but they're not going to be real numbers you're going to have a letter I in them. You're going to have at least one like that. I want you to simplify it down the best that you can. I recognize right now that those numbers are going to get ugly looking. You're going to have a radical sitting there. You're going to have some fractions to deal with. I want you to make a mess. Okay? On those items where a negative appears under the radical, I'm not looking for a correct answer from you. I'm looking for how far did you get with this big crazy mess of fractions, okay? So don't be intimidated if you're feeling like these numbers are weird and they're probably not correct because that's not what I'm grading for, okay? I'm going to be reading those just to see where you're at, to see how far we've come and how good you're doing with those fractions and what more I need to do so to support you moving forward, okay? All right, any other questions? That's it. Thank you guys very much.